Hi everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.co.uk Back again with another project in our Step It Up series And this is the series where I'm, get, where I'm taking you from a beginner crafter With just a very few supplies which we had in this card here Ink, note card and um, a stamp set and we did that, my original one in blueberry bushel and very vanilla. And this one was then done in Highland Heather on White. Um, we're then stepping it up to the next level, which is the ink, the stamp set, but also the coordinating punch. And it also assumes that you've got a trimmer so you can start to make your own card bases. So that's the card we're going to do today. Um, and then the following one is going to be this stepped up version, which uses embossing as well and the addition of a little bit extra bling. So without further ado, let's get on with the project. So there's our card. And you'll see what I've used is more than one of the of the butterflies here. In this stamp set, we've got these, these beautiful butterflies and there are four different designs which lend themselves to a number of techniques. The other thing you're going to need for this particular project is a blender pen, but this means that you can start to do colouring whatever ink pad you happen to have, uh, providing it's a water-based one. So there's our stamp set and this is new in the spring 2018-2019 catalogue. And as I say, this card was done in blueberry bushel and very vanilla, which is a, a colour combination. I love navy and cream together. It's just not quite as, as harsh, but I also love the freshness of, um, of colours with white. So I'm going to do the next card in Highland Heather. And I'm using the Stampin' Up trimmer, obviously. Um, one, because I think it is absolutely fantastic. Um, and that's no other reason. Uh, obviously, I'm a Stampin' Up demonstrator, but uh, I have to say, once I'd used one of these, I ditched my old one and went straight. To, to the stamping up version. So to start off with you need a piece of card and I'll give the dimensions in centimetres on my blog so you're going to start doing a bit of measuring um, and you need it's half a sheet of, of A4 which I've cut down to um, five and three quarter inches on the top here 14 and a half centimetres uh, by eight inches so that's 20 centimetres and what I'm going to do is line my card up on this left hand edge at four inches so just halfway and using my scoring blade hope you can see that um, I'm just going to push that up always try and go from the bottom to the top because at the top you've got a nice little ledge which means you can keep your card nice and straight and it whereas if you pull it down you might put it off at a slight angle so if you're struggling to get square card bases from the bottom upwards and that creates a little score which makes it easier to fold your card it stretches the fibers in the card which means that when you fold it you don't get that nasty cracking um, the other useful tool uh, that, that I use is a stamping up bone folder and that just reinforces the crease to make it stand up nice you're then going to cut a piece of I've used Highland Heather to five and a quarter, 13 and a half by three and a half by nine centimeters. Um, and that's creating our layers. And to get a nice even border, make sure that you're coming the same amount smaller on all sides. I've gone a little bit wider on that one. And then I'm just using a quarter inch border on the next level. So this is three and a quarter inches. So um, that's uh, eight and a half centimeters by five inches, so 12 and a half. So we're just coming down half a centimeter or a quarter of an inch, and that will give us a nice border there. It's not too big, not too small, okay? And then the next piece of cutting we're going to do are our next two layers. And this one is two by, so one and a half inches, um, <clears throat> five by four centimeters, um, one and a half by two inches. And then this layer here is one and three quarter inches. So you can just see that one and three quarters there. There's a big half, there's our three quarters by one and a quarter. So there's our one inch and our quarter halfway between the half um, there. And that's 4.5 by 3.5 centimeters. I say, as usual, I'll put the measurements on my blog so you don't have to rush and write them down. You can just copy them straight down from there. The other thing that makes Stampin' Up! so easy is um, the fact that they do envelopes all ready to go. So they do envelopes in both Whisper White and Very Vanilla, and they've got plenty of space. So even if you have layers, it, you've got space to get those layers in as well. 
so I'm going to use one of my envelopes too. So I'm not going to do any stamping on the outside of the card base, I'm just going to stamp on the inside to decorate and that's just a really nice way to finish it off and choose whichever butterfly you fancy. I'm using this little sort of patchworky one. I'm just coming off on the side here and I'll put another one at the bottom there. Okay. I can put that to one side now. I'm going to decorate my envelope. I usually do this at the end, but hey, let's mix it up a bit. So again, you can actually fit, if you just keep it nice and square and put it roughly in the middle. Pull the butterfly on the back there. And then again, just off on the corner, pop that to one side as well. And then we can get on with our panels. So we don't have to do anything with this panel, that's going to go straight onto our card, or it will do once I've done it. Okay, so that's going to go on as a layer there. But this is the piece that we're going to stamp on, so this large whisper white piece. Um, <clears throat> and b b what we're doing on this card, if you remember, is we've changed the orientation so that it's going to be it's the same style as before, but we've just turned it up. And that just shows you that just by changing the, the orientation of your card, it can make it look different. And I'm just going to come and stamp all over, in effect, to create my own pattern paper. But to do that, when I come over it, I change the angle of my stamp because that makes it look it's a little bit different it also means that you're going to get a different effect every time you create um, with your stamp set and then I'm going to come in just on the edge here And as I said, as you go along, always try and keep your blocks clean. I've obviously rubbed, I've rocked a little bit, so I'm just going to come round and keep that, because that stops it getting on the edge of your fingers, which is a, a, a very neat trick of mine, and it stops it going onto your, um, onto your project. So that's to create our background piece, and we're just going to layer that straight onto the back here. At least I would. I'm, I would usually use snail for this, but... I seem to have misplaced my snail. Oh, I found it, there we go. And this is a tape runner, and this really just make creating your projects nice and easy. All you do is I just hover over on one edge and line it up in that corner. And because it's an even border, I know once I've got it lined up, pretty square, I can just put it down. That's our base. We're then going to come in and on some scrap pieces of card I'm going to stamp my butterfly once in this outline pattern and once in this almost kind of like doodled version and then I'm going to come in with a couple of the little ones on the edge there I'm actually going to do three of those. I'm just using the edges and that's because I'm going to save some card as we go around. Then we're going to come in with our punch and this lovely punch um, that comes with the stamp set is great because it um, cuts both butterflies out at one go. Um, oh, what I haven't done is the little little fat bodies. So the bodies, I'm going to do the small ones first and just put them in the middle. Um, I find that when I'm just stamping as I did the backgrounds I don't need the bodies. That was a particularly awful body I've just done there. <laughs> but when I'm doing, you've probably got a lovely headshot now, um, the punched ones I just find somehow it doesn't quite look right if you don't have a little bit of a body in there. I've done those very very rough and ready and um, I'm going to quickly wipe off my stamp uh, before I come in with the large one and then just pop that in the middle there okay <clears throat> pop 
my ink pad away before I stick my elbow in it and just come in and by popping that stamped image and viewing it from underneath you can really line it up rather well and then just press down if you can always try and press down on your desk uh, because that helps um, keep the uh, you know pr preserve the the long life of your punch they are very robust but um you know if, if you twist and also if you've got any dexterity problems that helps as well um but if you're able to then and you can do it nice and centrally you can do it with these as well with uh with it's a free hand you see by doing it on the edge you can see i've got those butterflies without creating lots of waste cardstock as well although with something like this you could obviously punch them out and keep them um for when you wanted <clears throat> Um, now, one thing I didn't do here actually was um, ink up my ink up my butterfly, so I'm now going to try and do that on the punch shape. So this should work pretty well. So come in with our petals, stamp off. This is what we did before. This is to get the lighter colour, and then just hover over the top. And there's our butterfly. That worked actually remarkably well. Do the same with our lower portion. Hover. There's a coloured in butterfly. Now what we're going to do next is I'm going to use my little block and just add some ink onto it like so. <clears throat> and now using your blender pen, which of course I have put down on the side, here we go, and all I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of ink from here on my blender pen and just colour in just certain sections of my butterfly and the beauty of the blender pen is that it's not saturating the card and it means that you've actually got a, a way of colouring with whatever ink pad you happen to have to hand so if you suddenly decide oh I want to do a bit of colouring on that oh I haven't got a, a marker in that one then if you've got blender pens then you can still colour in with those coloured um, those coloured markers and I say you can really sort of go to town you can add you know as much or as little colour I'm obviously going to keep it quite simple because I think you get the idea of, of doing a bit of colouring but there, I think you'll agree that just brings our little butterfly to life and we can do the same on these ones here by just colouring in certain sections of our butterfly just changes the the appearance very slightly like so. So once you've done that we've just got our little panels to complete which of course I have managed to misplace. There we go. Uh, keep that nice and square if you can. I'm really am rubbish at, at, um, at keeping things square I have to say. Um, it's something I struggle with. I love the stamparatus um, but that's a kind of a more advanced item. Just again a little note nice and using the grid lines to add that on and then I'm going to just come in and just to add a bit of interest I stamp my butterfly on either corner like so <clears throat> so pop our stamps to one side and come in and add our layers or oh, one thing I did mention didn't mention that, that you do need are some dimensionals these are a great way of adding a bit of interest to any card that you've got they come pre-cut with stamping up and are so useful um, yes they're a little bit more expensive than if you buy it on the roll but the joy of not having gluey sticky scissors of always having them just the right shape and the right size and again remember you only need you know, one in each corner and one in the middle is what I tell my ladies so again just do a rough line up you 
can measure it if you want. There's our note. With our butterflies, you can actually just pop a little bit of glue on the back there. Bend the wings up and if you just attach the glue, it means that you end up with a nice appearance of a flying butterfly. Do the same with our little dinky ones. If you prefer wet glue, that works really well with these. Um, and I'm just going to add another one. Couple in. One on, on the front of the card there. And then a final one further down. Um, rule of three, ideally you put three of put things in groups of three. So I've got one, two, three butterflies here, and I'm just going to add three. An odd number usually, you know, looks best. And all that's left to do is for me to pop this onto the front of my card base. Like so. And there you have a pretty butterfly gala um, card for somebody who has minimal supplies. Card, ink, punch and a little bit of glue. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope it inspires you to create some projects. Come back and see me again soon to see our stamped up version using a little bit of embossing. Um, and um, don't forget, if you want any of the supplies here, follow the links on my blog, flutterbyheidi.co.uk, or alternatively, go to my shop, heidismith.stampinup.net. Bye now.